Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and we're in Copenhagen in the airport with a little five hour layover. So my flight's at 3.30. Not on this one, not on that one, not on that one, not on that one. Oh wait, mine's not even up yet. <sighs> and today we have for you are five things you're going to love, <laughs> good luck on that one, and five things you're going to hate about having a long layover. <sighs> Believe me, it was easy to find the hates. The loves, eh, work with me on them, okay? Now, let's start with it. The first thing you're going to hate about your layover is you're going to get bored out of your mind. You're checking your watch all the time. You're checking your phone. You're just bored because you got to wait around. And a lot of airports don't have a lot of activities for you to do aside from shopping and spending money. And that's one of the big things is if you know you're going to have a layover, make sure, you know, have your Kindle or your download some books, um, you know, have a book to read, have something you can do when you're here. Otherwise, you sit there and you get extremely bored and it does get very frustrating. And if you're traveling with other people, that boredom you kind of uh, gets you kind of fighting along with them. So make sure you bring some other stuff to do. I mean, like for example, I'm making a video about layovers because I've got five hours. What else am I gonna do? Okay, but that first thing you're gonna hate is that boredom of this long layover. Now, the second thing you're not gonna like about the long layover is if you're stuck here, well, there's no free food and there's no cheap food and there's no cheap entertainment. So it does get expensive if you are here for a while, if you've gotta go eat or if you wanna go drink, because all the prices here seem to be doubled in the real world. And so that's one of the second thing you're not gonna like is you're gonna spend a lot of money getting something to eat or getting something to drink, because not all airports have free water. So you're dropping all this money doing these things and it just kind of sucks, just waiting around, bored, wasting your money. Ugh. Yes, this layover is going really well, can't you tell? Now the third thing you might not like about your layover is if you're going to be traveling with other people or you're traveling with lots of baggage, sometimes it is a pain in the butt to move your stuff around. Because if you just have a little backpack, oh I can throw that on. But if I got shopping or if I got kids, I've got to keep moving around and, and that gets a bit frustrating when you're there. You know, dealing with your baggage for hours on end, not sure what to do, and then the people are sitting there and if you got to go to the bathroom, who's going to watch your bags? Because no one's going to watch the bag because you're not supposed to because that's wrong. It just gets kind of frustrating. I mean, I got to pee and I'm hoping somebody will walk by and be nice enough to let me pee. But uh, you got to think about these things. The fourth thing you're not going to like about a long layover is usually if you get in early enough or you have a long layover, probably your gate isn't announced yet. And so you're kind of waiting around to find out where your gate is going to be. I still don't know where my next gate is. But the thing is, gates do move a lot, especially these flights that have, you know, you've got a long layover. you got to make sure you're paying attention all the time. Because I've seen people that just kind of like sat at their gate, got bored, fell asleep, and then their gate moved. They woke up. No one's there. What happened? They missed their flight. Okay, so you really got to pay attention to that. So always be paying attention to where the gates are so in case they get moved. Because that's one of the big things people you know, kind of miss their flights when they're actually at the airport is because they didn't notice the gate change. And a lot of the airports in Europe don't actually announce the gate changes. They just, just shows up on the board. So be careful with that. And the fifth thing you're going to hate about layovers is the lack of 21st century help. Look, we all are using phones, we're all using laptops, we're all using tablets, and it all takes electricity. And you know what? I'm looking around and I'm not seeing any plugs. So charging your, finding charging stations can be a pain. There might be one where they, where they vacuum or something like that, and then people, you know, all are huddled around it. Now, some airports are getting better and putting more of these charging stations up, but you really need to pay attention because if you need your phone when you get there, there might not be a plug to, to be here. So what I recommend is get one of those external, like, you know, little battery things that can charge your phone up like 30%. So in case it dies while you're at the layover, you can charge it up when you get to your next destination. So you can call your taxi or your wife. Like I have to call my wife to let her know we're there. These kind of things. Those are things we all hate. And we could also mention, you know, like having to run to the gate and, and you know, just being really crappy being stuck at an airport because it's never that fun. But there are some actually good things about being at the airport if you do have a long layover. One of the things, we're here five hours in Copenhagen. It's easy enough for me to get into town. I can go visit Copenhagen for a couple hours and get back. Or I've done that in London where I had like an eight hour layover. Hey, I got to go visit London and see my buddies there, have lunch with them, head back to the airport. My family, we flew from the US to China via Helsinki. We had 12 hours in Helsinki, so we got to go see Helsinki, enjoy it. And you would have these little layover kind of visits and see places. A lot of times you're going from Europe to Australia. They'll have a, you know, a day stopover, an eight hours layover in Hong Kong or Singapore. And you can go see these towns. So what I recommend is if you have a longer layover, I usually suggest six hours. Um, for this is see how long it is to get into the city. 
Is it a quick one? So if you're going to Chicago, it can take 20 minutes to get downtown or it can take an hour and a half to get downtown, depending on traffic. So you really got to pay attention for what time of the day is, how you get into town, stuff like that. Brussels, you can hop on the train. Amsterdam, you can hop on the train. You're in there. Copenhagen, it's very easy to get into town from the airport and getting back. And remember, when you come back, you have to go through security again. So give yourself plenty of time to go through all those things again. Okay, but it is kind of cool that you get to you know kind of see another city or a country or something like that just for a little visit. So maybe it finds out you know what I want to come back here and check this out again, or you decide you don't want to come back again. That eight hours was enough. Okay, I know we're looking forward to go back to Finland because we really enjoyed our layover. Now the second thing that I found is when I have a longer layover, sometimes you get these longer layovers because they can't put you on the flight because it's too close. Well, sometimes you have a long layover. You get if it gets in early, sometimes they'll book you on an earlier flight so you can get home early or get to your location earlier and that's really nice also if you're there earlier then you're more you're less likely to get bumped from the next flight because usually they bump the people from the first flight not like not their second flight so that that's one of the little benefits of having the layovers hey hey i've already checked in i've already got my seat it's already taken care of okay now the third thing i remember i'm searching here for things to like about long layovers is hey duty free you know you've never really spent the time to really analyze the prices of duty free and sometimes you know sometimes where airports have free wi-fi sometimes they don't i always get data packages and i can compare hey am i saving money with duty free or not <sighs> yes like i said it's tough finding anything good about long layovers aside from going into the cities now but you can check out the duty free and sometimes you can't get good deals on that i do recommend you really check it out make sure it's something you really want and look at the country you're going to where you're coming from and that will really kind of depend because the duty free shops actually have different prices by different cities so it might be better to get it in here in copenhagen than in hamburg or something like that the fourth thing you're going to like and this is one thing i really recommend are the lounges if you're like a Premier member or something like that, Silver Premier or Gold or a Diamond, obviously you're going to be spending time in the lounges. However, if you're a solo traveler by yourself and you don't have millions of miles, you know what, it might be worth it to pay the one-day fee, the one-time fee to get, you know, 20 bucks or 40 bucks to get into the lounges here because a lot of the lounges throughout Europe and Asia are very nice. And in there you get free drinks and you can get Wi-Fi and there's plugs there and all those things you really need. And it is well worth the money to take that to get in there. I mean, I did this in Austria once. I didn't have the, the miles kind of thing. I paid the extra money for it. I was like, oh, my goodness. I had drinks and I had beer and I had wi-fi that was fast i mean it was great and it was free and so make sure if you get a chance if you got a long layover it might be worth it to pay for the lounge if you've got kids sometimes it's not as easy but it is worth if it's just you it is worth paying for the lounge if you're going to be there for a long time and the fifth thing you're going to love about your layover is that it's over you can go and get your plane and go home Yes, like I said, it's really hard to find anything you're going to love about long layovers. Anyway, that was just a little fun video I wanted to put together for you here in Copenhagen. If you have some more uh, fun advice for dealing with long layovers, I am all ears. Put it in the comments section below so we can have some more uh, ideas for my next time I'm stuck for five or six hours in an airport. See you later from Copenhagen.